Good evening to everyone tonight. I want to apologize for coming very late. I am sorry. Um, we work on this weakness and uh, hopefully it will happen again. Uh, if you can hear my voice, please just send the I so I can know you are hearing me. Um, I'm very impressed at the level of um, knowledge that people have um, exhibited so far in class. And um, I hopefully believe that we are going to have a good time today. Uh, so uh, we will not take waste time, or we continue from where we stopped the last time. We were dealing with um, the parameters that gives uh, a seven and above in writing, and we talk I mean, and we talked about. Um, Tax response, queries and coercion, lexical resource and um, sentence, uh, I mean, uh, grammatical inaccuracy. Then um, we, we, are, we are now talking about um, outline, the, I mean, the, the types of opinion essays. We have talked about opinion essays and then the idea essay. So we are now dealing with the types of opinion essay that we have. And then we said the opinion essay um, is divided into two parts. That's a viewpoint essay and then uh, the discussion essay. So we have been able to trash something about the viewpoint essay. We gave some little notes about it. And last week, uh, I, I mean, not last week, but that was Monday. It looks like last week. Uh, a number of us are, are able to write or draft out um, what a, um, a discussion, I mean, a, a viewpoint introduction looks like. Now, I, I'd like you to know that um, ability to impress your examiner does not come from the abundance of the vocabulary of that statement, but simple English rules, simple English rules. And that's the reason why sometimes we put very big English and all that, but it will still not make much sense to the examiner. You need to understand what the examiner is really looking for and give it to him. And this is where a lot of kindness have problem. They don't know what the examiner wants, so they just craft something. And that's why I gave that structure of last week: no trust statements, no trust statements. It is important that you know how to draft a no trust statement without cracking your brain. And that is the reason again why I actually talked much about the use of useful language useful language if you don't know the useful language that is uh that is i mean that that is appropriate in the use of i mean in, in the drafting of um a simple neutral statement you will likely think of just draft anything and when you draft anything, you get anything. I, I, I saw a number of us try to, you know, use our mind to think. Now, I'd I, I like you to know, there is, um, after this particular issue on introduction, I'll be talking about body, and I'll be talking about concession, then we move to conclusion, okay? Now, I will now go back to planning, how to plan. Now, when you get to the planning section, you will discover that, there is so much to use your mind to, to, work, to, to, to work with than to be using it on, uh, on, a, on how to write neutral statements or trying to use your mind to, to draft how to write a, a what now, how to draft a, you know, a thesis statement. The structures are there. All you need to do is know them. Just know them. And last week, I did us a favor of calling out some of those structures for us to, 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 to write. 
I think I did that last week, and I expect that every one of us had me when I did that. Because I wanted you to have a simple idea of how the framework of this past looked like. You see, you need to come to a junction of knowing some things that if I use this particular method, I'll be fine for it. If you are still having fear that, ah, this thing, hope it will not work, then you will have a lot of things to think about. You start thinking, how do I draft my neutral statement that is not acceptable? How, how, how do I draft my this? How do I draft my that? And by the time that thought comes to your mind, the things you're supposed to think about, you're not going to think about it properly. And definitely, when, when the, the major of thoughts, thoughts uh, 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 or uh, how will I put it now? The major of, uh, uh, active thoughts aspect of writing task two is your ideas. That's where thought thinking has to come in. Now, when, when you are not able to think properly, when I say properly, I mean you are not able to think deeply to be able to pull out real point that will taste your examiner and that will make you to actually you know, write something tangible. And you now write a beautiful introduction. What, does they want, what do they want to introduce to do? Your ideas are watery. No, it, it, it does not catch attention of the examiner. Doesn't doesn't fascinate them. It, 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 it does not carry the weight of of your of your reason. Then there's a problem. So, uh, uh, for the sake of those people that probably didn't get the useful statement last week, I'm going to call them again. The only part that does not have useful useful statement is your uh, thesis statement, which even is so simple because you just have to paraphrase few words there. You are, a large bulk of the of, of what's in your test statement to be written out. I, I mean, what, what I was talking about, background statements. Large a, a bulk of it to be written out. So just a change of two, three words, and you are fine. So let us try and see some useful language that you can use for your neutral statements. I'd like you to write it down. This is something you have to write down. It's not a matter of I have it in my mind. Because from what I saw, so many of us are still thinking about neutral statement. There's no need to think about it. There are three things you won't think about in writing your neutral statement. I mean, writing your introduction. Number one, you don't have to think about um, your neutral statement. Number two, you don't have to think about your thesis statement. And number three, you don't have to think about your outline statement. As a matter of fact, you may not even have to think about that statement. These are things you just write down naturally without struggle. So it's, it's, it's not easy to, to, to get worried or to begin to especially think and, and think and then almost having a headache because you are trying to look for slowly. Okay? So let's go. The, the, the first word you write for your test statement is you can say there is a widespread concern about then you now frame you now pick a, a framework from the topic the main topic itself the summary of that topic okay that the sector that topic belongs to you now add it maybe it's an education about education maybe it's discipline about discipline see <laughs> I, I i want people don't try to prove that you go out to write uh, you know in this language during the ais exam all the things you have been learning since primary school till now, if you use that one to attack it, won't be fail. You understand? Ah, uh -uh. hear me. Please, if you're not hearing me, can I see your hand, please? If you're not hearing me at all, probably uh, just send a, a no, no, something. Let me see, sir. But if you can hear me, let me know. If you can hear me, let me know. Because I want to be sure that it's not only me. All right, I'm loud and clear. Okay, I can. Yeah. So that means the person that's not hearing me not be having you with network. All right, then it's okay. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now, if one, <laughs> if one, you you are going to IELTS and you are using the, uh, you know, when I was in school, I was the best English student. Ah, that doesn't work for So if you like have a one in in English, it doesn't matter. <laughs> they, don't, they don't care about that. The major thing is know what they want and give it to them. But 
have your six for seven and leave the exam for for them. You don't have it's an exam that is virtual for me, it's, it's not necessary, but fine, they have submitted us to it and it's a lot of money. And so you just need to know what they want and give it to them. Simple as A, B, C. Number one, there is a widespread concern about so and so. That's all. Number two, it is virtually certain that this and that. Number three, I'm, I'm giving us options. You understand? Just pick one that you like and stay with it. <laughs> you know? And, and, and funny, funnily, in ice exam for it, you are not you are not going to be writing more than one tax two question. That's the truth. You will be writing two tax two. Just one. You'll be writing one tax one and one tax two. One one. So any practice you are doing, practice as though you are going to be writing just one exam. Don't practice as if you want to write five exams. You understand? So just take one or two or three structures under each of these aspects. Learn it and master it. Let it be your pattern of writing. Your pattern, your normal pattern of writing. Okay. I think the person doesn't have to know how to. Can you repeat it? I didn't get you. Okay. All right. Uh, the person I didn't hear me, I think she wasn't able to connect properly. Please, if you can help those who are not able to connect properly to you. Just... I, so I, didn't, I, I didn't get you when you were, when you were saying it. Uh, I'm going to come back again. But well, please, somebody should just guide um, those who are still struggling with connecting. Tell them to press the button, the icon twice, this icon. This, um, so that they can know what to do. So uh, they will not have to just stay and be struggling. This uh, audio in icon twice, so that they can. There's also just something to type it down. If I have a difficulty hearing, press the audio icon twice, so that they can, they can be able to hear. So I said, master two or three structures of this particular useful language for neutral statement or for other aspects. Master it, let it be your normal pattern. Don't change it. If you write another essay, use another method. Another essay, use another one. Use another essay, use another method. Abba. It's only one English test, one tax two that you're going to be writing. One, just one tax two, not five, not three. So you just need to know one structure that is over that that is universal in, in, in approach that you that we almost fit into any essay and you are fine so that in your practice you keep using that structure over and over and over so that by the time you are writing it becomes a normal part of you to write it that way so it is it's not going to be an issue of i'm trying to remember i'm trying to think because there's so much to think about under real exam condition than all these minor areas, okay? So I said this other one is there's a universal consensus that there's a universal consensus that then you can also say it is generally, generally acceptable, uh, accepted that yes. excuse me, it is generally accepted that you can also say uh, uh, this the, 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 uh, there is a uh, um, now at this or recently comma or now at this or in the world today comma there has been a a a uh, a, 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 a cons I mean there has been a widespread a, 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 a heated debate about the subject of so and so or there has been a, a an argument or a controversy. There has been a controversy, or there seems to be, a, or there appears to be a controversy about so and so. The only way it suits you, right? But let it be a normal pattern that you are used to. Now, the background statement is simply a paraphrase. And I said, try to marry your background with your neutral statement. Now, what I'm saying is quite simple to do. The, the reason why some people um, will um, have difficulties with this is perhaps because they have had so they have read so many materials, had so many whatever. In fact, I read the material back then that said you don't have to write introduction. So so many materials that sometimes you are even confused. Which one is even the right thing? So, but see, you are 
you are, you are not you are not going to write your eyes twice. It's only once. So just know the normal as normal approach. Don't go tech. Don't go high tech. But I don't know. So maybe maybe they have so much money. You understand? And so okay, let me just um, you know let, 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 let me try this time. Mm -mm, don't try. Go with the most Mindset. normal approach. <laughs> The most normal approach, let me use that word normal. Like, this is the normal way you should write the exam. Official. You understand? Like, you are doing an official interview. Then you don't go there with a, with, with a, 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 a air code that, that they cut this place and call that place. You want to be as normal as possible. Even if you are a funny person, when they ask you questions, you will answer officially. You will say, ah, I'm a comedian. To be answer officially, so that mindset should be that of an official individual that is going for a, uh, an interview, and you have in the normal approach of answers to questions. You are not going there to crack jokes. You are not going there to make fun. You are very very official, and that's a wisdom. So the paraphrasing. Now, how do you link your paraphrase with your notes statements? It's simple. Now let us try to do this. I'm I'm doing it on a, on on on. I mean, for any topic now, you can apply it also whenever you say any topic. Nowadays, or in the re in recent times, there have been widespread concern about the subject of pollution, which has led to an argument that so and so is uh, uh, better to approach this in this particular whatever community, full stop. You can also say that in the recent times, in recent times, there has been widespread concern or there has been heated debates about the subject of child discipline as a school of thought believes that children should be punished why others feel otherwise. Simple, straight. Now, now let, let me try and make a kind of definition here. In IELTS, what they're looking for is professional English, not complicated English, not hard English, not, not high-level English. It's matured, professional English. Now, that is different from simple english that you say i am a boy i am a gay i want to go to market that one is kindergarten english that's not what you are looking for so in as much as you are trying to be professional you are advising to be too simple like a child that is learning all powerful apple or powerful boss at the same time you are also trying to uh, maintain a high level of professionalism in the approach to the exam. So learning some framework and mastering it is not a bad idea at all. It's not a bad idea. It's, as a matter of fact, it's a lifesaver. It will only keep you from cracking your brain. And one of the things that makes a lot of students to fail is that they don't even know the, uh, the, 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 the right framework that if they put down, it's just going to seal it. Sometimes we try to just use a word that okay, we want to try and use a word that we really that we believe is going to make an exam to smart. I remember when I was writing some of these stuff. I remember an exam. I wrote a particular English pre pre uh, 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 pr prerogative, and I was excited. Yeah, wow, prerogative, big English. I had six in there, I'm six, and I was wondering maybe I wrote prerogative. By the time I get I say, it's not about prerogative that you wrote. If you like, write uh, encyclopedia, write, write, write uh, 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 emotionalism, la, 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 nationalism. Don't, they don't care. Professional English. Professional English. Know what the examiner wants and give it to you. And that's not what I'm telling you. These are frameworks by Cambridge examiners themselves that wrote a book. This is the framework that they used to draft, that they drafted, and the advice that we can use. So I'm not just calling it from my head. I myself read this somewhere. 
So you have to apply it, okay? Now, uh, so I've said how we can fuse those things together. Just try and make sure that your, your linking word is appropriate. That's the same. Don't use a wrong linking word when you are trying to bring, bridge your neutral and your background statement. Now, some people often write this essay without interest statements. That is true. They just say, um, some people believe that rice is bad, while some claim it is good. That is too simple. It is too simple. So professionally, even if you are going to speak to a, to an audience, it is why that you give a, some word that introduce people to the topic. You don't just start saying, um, even if you are going to preach in church or probably in mosque or anywhere that probably you want to, you don't just start the topic and say, food. Food is, people say, ah, you didn't even greet us, you know. So it is just idea that you try and give a word that will, first of all, call the attention of your reader. And that is interest statement, and that's what it's all about. So, and these are the frameworks. I'll give you like several. Pick any one you like. You can just pick two or three that you just, you just to show very well, and you keep on using, okay? And then that'll be fine. So, that, I've I said this, um, we we'll move on to testing statements. And I've said testing statements can be approached in three or four ways. But importantly, guide against writing your testing statement together with your background statement. It is not necessary. It only makes your word, your, your sentence to be too complicated. It becomes too, too, too long. Too, and at the same time, I mean, at the same time, it loses theme and meaning. So better still, let your examiner come to a point where he can say, okay, this is what, this is exactly what um, this um, um, uh, candidate is trying to say. I strongly agree. And don't say I strongly agree with the opinion. Which opinion? Because what you are calling opinion is no opinion. What you are calling opinion is a mixture of arguments. And what you are calling opinion is not yet defined. It's a, it's a complicated issue. It's the argument of some people. So you need to now say what you agree with out of those two issues that is being raised. You know, in this particular argument, we are saying some people believe that this is that, why some believe this is that, or there's an argument about this subject. So instead of you to just, uh, uh, you know, just speak, just speak your, 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 your I mean, a, 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 an assumption that the examiner should know what opinion you are giving on. Try to let, let the examiner know the opinion. Now, when you are going to write that opinion down, there's a professional way to write it. So I, I strongly agree, or I strongly, or, or I firmly believe, or I, 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 I strongly believe, or I firmly believe, or I strongly agree that children should be given certain measure of, I mean, certain punitive measures to be able to make them responsible in the society. That is a simple opinion. The examiner will see that this is exactly what you are saying. Very straight. Now, the same thing applies to uh, uh, if it was, they were asking you, do you agree or disagree? Okay, I agree that um, um, uh, money should be expended on other planets to be able to open up for possible life in those planets. Let your, uh, uh, your, your opinion be, be, very, be very clear, a uh, crystal, in your body, I mean, in, 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 your, in your thesis statement, very clear. Now, why did now, if you did not see anything like, do you agree, or to what extent do you, if the word you is not seen in the question that is being asked, you should not answer with an I. If they don't ask you a question, don't answer with an I. And an example of this is if they say, does the positive outweigh the negative? Does the positive outweigh the negative? That one is very, very clear. The word you is not being involved here. So 
you should answer in that professional manner. They are not asking me a question. They are only giving, they want to know a opinion of the positive over the negative. So you just answer by saying, you can say something like, uh, uh, this is the most, this is the one I seem to like most. The benefit of this approach or the benefits appears to be more overwhelmingly positive. Okay? The benefits appear to be more overwhelmingly positive. You can also say, this concept seems to be somewhat inadequate, if it is negative we're talking about. And you can also say, it is an ins inescapable, inescapable fact, inescapable fact that the pros are more impactful or the pros have more impact than the cons. All the advantages will do will, will be more beneficial than the disadvantages. Because it did not answer, it did not ask you, do you? And they didn't want to talk about agree or disagree. So you don't all you, all you say questions like does the positive agree the negative? They are not saying do you agree or disagree. So you don't say I agree that mm -mm. that's that's a wrong answer. And that breaks your mark down. So when they don't ask you, do you agree? Don't answer, I agree. If they don't ask you, do you agree? Don't say I agree. Because they're not asking you any question. Where they, where, where, it is only where they ask you a question that you answer with a I. All right? So, having said this, moving on to the approach that you are going to be giving for your outline statement. That is the most simplest, <laughs> of course, that is tautology, right? The simplest way you could write your essay. Uh, the, and the simplest points, yeah, you know if you have to think. This essay discuss, this essay will discuss the reasons why. Instead of saying the reason why it is so, <clears throat> what is so? What is so? Don't assume for the examiner. Rather, try to paraphrase what you said on that day, um, under that uh, test statement. You can paraphrase it. This essay is discuss the reasons why it is necessary for children or for 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 for, 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 for training of children to be given a paramount attention. How to get that place? This essay will discuss the reasons why it is crucial. Now, when you now have questions that has to do with strongly agree, then you can now begin to say, this essay will discuss the reasons why it is completely necessary, or it is absolutely necessary, or it's absolutely important, or it is totally important, or ultimately important for children to face a level of physical punishment or level of corporal dealings or discipline or punishment, whatever. Trying to paraphrase. Now, that means you likely paraphrase in three points. Number one, under your background statement, under your thesis statement, and under your outline statement. Paraphrasing properly will be a major wisdom. And doing this in such a way that you don't have to um, repeat your words and you don't have to choose too much summarize. We give you a leverage before the examiner. So I, I, I think we should quickly adapt these principles and get used to it so that we don't get complicated. I like to move the body today. And there's a structure for the boy that it is that is very germane. It's normal. It's, it's straightforward for all forms of body. I've said something before. I said if you try to ensure that your 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 body contains repetition. Okay. We will come back to this. I will answer this question. Now, so back to the body issues. There's a frame up of body body that we should learn. Number one, I've said it before, I said, your body must contain two ideas at, at least. 
and three ideas at most. That's the list, or the most, at least at most. Note that. Let that one be implanted in your mind. So some people write these things separately. They write the body of um, the, the body one separately, and the rest one idea for body one. They write another, another idea for body two. No, that those two ideas is one body. You only link it with a con connective device. Okay, so back to the issue. But the one has to do with a topic sentence, an explanation, an example. Then the second topic sentence, explanation, example, and then evidence. Topic sentence, explanation, example. The other topic sentence, explanation, example, and evidence. Now, because it's, so you could say, ah, this is too long, but it is that, that is the idea. You can now, you, you may decide to frame up your, um, your, your second topic sentence, for example, into one. Such that you, you may not have to um, write in separate forms. You write it as a complex sentence. That's for the second one. You can do that. Now, <laughs> how do you frame these stuffs? Are we going to that? Now, so far, do you understand what I've been saying so far? Do I need to repeat myself? Just a, just a minute, please. Okay, all right, I think everybody is flowing with me, thank you. So, your topic sentence is the introduction to your body paragraph, all right? It's your introduction to your body paragraph, and the way you write it matter. Okay, the way you write it matters, many people are not aware of this. So they start their topic sentence like an explanation. So you start reading topic sentence, read the first line, second line, third line, fourth line. Ah, where is the major issue about it? I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the topic sentence. Ah, maybe it's the last sentence. <laughs> he was able to write the topic sentence in such a way that he's so straight and he's eating the nail on the head, like eating the nail. You, what are you going to be talking about? Now, and that's the reason why I will be going back to talk about idea planning. All right? Your topic sentence should carry the theme of that set of that sentence of, of, of that paragraph. For some people, they can write the two ideas in the in, in that first topic sentence. Why some will write the first uh, idea, explain it, give example, go to second idea, explain it give example, and they give evidence. That is the best. In so many of the essays I've, I've seen, written by Cambridge um, Brethren, uh, uh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to say Brethren, Cambridge examiners, you will, you will actually observe that they often write the main theme of the first idea before they write the second theme of the second idea after the expert and especially having me, but they so few together you may not even know. But if you are careful enough, you know that's how they wrote it. Right? So, how do you write your body, um, your, your, your topic sentence? You simply make your reasons clear. Let me give an example. I remember every, every connective device that will make sense to any exam. I mean, everybody. Please write this down. L let, me, let me make a discussion. Now, write this exactly the way I'm saying it. Everybody that will make sense to the examiner must start with a connective device. 
Now it looks like I'm talking about every human of the body. I mean by body. Or anybody, any body that we make sense with the examiner must start with a connected device. So never start your essay nakedly or just blatantly. You must start with a connected device. It's called link what? To start with, to begin with. On the one hand, firstly, first of all. Now, there are some that you cannot use so because these sources are so really many. So, so, so that you can just say, oh, let me just use anyone I like, you know, uh, uh, and, and all that. But you should be careful to know the professional ones you have to use. And I can beat my chest for to start with and to begin with. On the one hand, I can beat my chest for those ones. Okay? So, comma, always with a comma when you wrote, uh, I've seen that. The f now, I will be talking about the techniques of a body sentence, of, of a body, or the techniques that you must learn to be able to properly write this. But just listen to this one. Perhaps the foremost reason why children must get a level of punishment for wrong doings is so that they can have a con they can build a conscience against right and wrong. That is very simple and clear. Pinpoint. So you know that I want to be talking about conscience against right against right and wrong. Now, if you now write it like this, the reason why children should be punished is so that if uh, is to be able to make sure that if they get angry and somebody now makes them to be to do someone now beats them, then the person will now give them wire and then they will cry. That will now make them to know that it is not good. <laughs> Thus, that sentence has lost meaning. Now, I was able to eat my point straight that they might, so that they can have a conscience or they can build a conscience against what right or towards the right and the wrong. Now, this is just a, an example from the, from the blues. Now, what I'm trying to find out is that the issue of conscience must be very clear cut, must be very clear cut so that you are not actually allow yourself not to be confused of what am I, what is he saying? What is he actually saying? It is so, you are, it, you, are, you are eating so clearly that there is no confusion. All right? And that is very crucial for your body, for your topic sentence. And the same thing applies to the second topic sentence. Now, the word perhaps there, as a work is doing, and I will advise you, you can put, now, some people are so, also apply, I saw one of my students that wrote an, uh, an, a talk session and I loved it. He said, he said the, uh, the, 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 the foremost reason that appears, I mean, the, 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 um, how did the person put it now? You just use the word, what I'm, uh, 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 the reason that appears to be most crucial, exactly. The reason that appears to be most crucial appears to be most uh, 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 most uh, uh, relevant that brings I mean that causes so and so is so and so now that person is not being exact but he's trying to use a level of um, maturity to portray the points to the examiner that okay this matter in my own opinion this is the foremost but in someone's opinion it may not be the foremost. So that one, perhaps, he's trying to say, I'm not sure, I'm not under the sure, but I'm being tentative. That is what we call tentative language. And it, it pushes your mark by one band score. Let me say this. If you write an essay and there's no tentative language, I write another essay and there are tentative languages, the probability of you having an extra band score 
is very likely 100% than if there is no text language. So you can start using your text language even from your topic sentence because it has a very major force that it bears on your mark. So perhaps the most common reason or the most, uh, I just said it now. I said it pushes your, your bar score by one. So if you are at level six, it gives you one extra one. If you, are, if you are probably at level, maybe level five, it reaches level six. So it gives your, your grammar an edge over when you don't have grammar at all. Okay, uh, I, I want to try and see if I can snap out that is that particular essay I was talking about and read out. But then, now the second point is your explanation. There is a major issue about explanation. It must be void of emotions. You must be. You must point. Your explanation must be full of points that are expanded. That's explanation. Expanded points. You know that the modeled, modeled English is not just be writing a lot of a lot of things. When when you talk about conscience, what is conscience? Conscience is when your artist ah, you know, you must expand your point. So just give maybe one or two extra points that are hidden under that point. Just expand it. And let me give an example now. But I've talked, I talked about lacking emotions. Don't be emotional. Don't say, hmm, this is a very big reason. That very is crisis for you. Chris, I'm going to be giving us that. Don't worry. I just want us to just go the framework now. The very may be emotional and avoid being emotional. Emotionalism is going to get you in trouble. The word very fantastic, fantabulous. Uh, 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 you know, you know, eh, 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 you know, sad. I mean, trying to bear your emotions. It was a very, very sad day, a sad day for me. Ah, this, this kind of business, an example, please. Don't try to let me get your examiner to be moved by what you are saying. Maybe to start crying. I don't care. Avoid racism, about discrimination, about what that is that's going to give you a. a a kind of um, look as if you are trying to call the same part of your examiner about all those things. They only put somebody in trouble. So it should be, it should, it should, it should just throw those things away. Now, let me give a, a picture now. I want to stand, I, I want to be very clean and clear. That's why I'm trying to see if I can pick up this essay. It's a fantastic comment. I feel we should have a kind of um, clear into it. Um, how am I finding difficult to get this thing? I don't know if I that way. So, it, it, now the way I write my own is like this. This is because what, um, um, the conscience appears to give a room for reflection. Okay? Now, that appears to give is another example of a room for reflection. A room for reflection after a level of confrontation against a wrongdoing or against an act of wrongdoing. Okay? Now, that, in a way, is trying to, like, appeal the examiner to what you, what you feel, I mean, what you mean about that conscious issue. Also, when an uh, 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 individual reflects, he begins to have a thought system for Possible, uh, possible, or uh, possible reasons why such attitudes should not be repeated again. Now, this is reasonable and straight, non-emotional. You are trying to just break an example down. I mean, I, I, I mean, a, a, a point down into clear reasons that are tangible and can consciously make the examiner know that what you are saying is true. And that is all right. That's all you need to do. So, one should be careful to avoid unnecessary hype or noise or discrimination or whatever in your writing. That is explanation. 
Now, moving on to example. Your example should not be personal. When I was a child, my mother used to beat me. Ha! Ah, wrong example. Error. Don't use personal examples. Avoid use of personal examples. Um, try to be professional. So you just make an illustration from an event that you can remember. Somebody now says, sir, what if I can't remember any event? And all I can just remember is that I'm feeling bored. <laughs> Very simple. Cook an event that is not going to be too complicated for you. As simple as that. Cook a non-complicated event and then try to describe it. And when you're describing, don't write statistics. Because the question said, pick your example from a personal experience. Now, if you start writing statistics, that uh, five people uh, uh, wrote this and that, 10 people, this and that, they are putting them in trouble. Because the bottom line is just that eventually you will end up writing a bogus point or a most likely unrealistic point. And that's to put you in trouble. So avoid figures generally. An example of this can be seen among uh, uh, Bulgarian children who, who, who often express a level of respect. Or, I like using level of, you will have observed that. Everybody have their own. Now, but the bottom line is that you, uh, you should now try to now correct it consciously. So you just change that level of to a height of or whatever it is that you like. But bottom line is this. Try not to be emotional in your example. Don't catch, a, don't catch the sympathy of your examiner. Just go straight to whatever you wanted to say and be very exact, be very pin, pinpointing in that, in that stuff. Now, in your example, you can write your example as a passive statement. I advise. Because you can write your example as a passive statement. That means you are trying to write from the back. Now, the children were beaten by the teacher. Bulgarian children often experienced high level, high handed discipline from their teachers. Okay? They are, they are turning it backwards. Every, every um, I don't want to use the sentence, but every essay that will give your examiner. A, 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 an attraction must be professional. So if you have been writing active, 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 there should be at least one or two passive statements in your essay. At least minimum one or two. And I will I will advise that you can let your example be that passive statement. Okay, now, let me read out this little essay for you to you. To be to start with, comma, not being accepted appears to be the foremost social problem experienced from people of other tongue. Look at the word appears to be. That is tentative statement, and it's it's going to switch that mark up once. Now, yes, in reality, it seems logical to agree that women perhaps find it difficult to associate with others who do not belong. This is a wonderful, powerful, non-emotional statement. Apart from the fact that you are is having a lot of tentative statements in God, like God, perhaps the words appear seems logical to agree. Already it is well, this can be an example, but the person still wants to write an example. Now let me. Let me, I'm, I'm going to read out this example to you, and I'm now going to give, give it to you in a passive way. Then let's see how we work together. For, for instance, a Chinese man may find relating with American neighbors to be a serious task. Let me now give the, um, uh, the passive statement. It, uh, for instance, uh, uh, Amer uh, American neighbors' relationship with Chinese men or American, an American relationship with a Chinese man in the same neighborhood could be a serious task. 
So turning it over, it could be a serious task for a Chinese man to relate to with an American, especially when they are neighbors. That's another form. Now we are to, we are we are trying to turn sentence into into many forms. All you are trying to do is to let yourself to have a a a a, a flexibility in your grammar, not necessarily big English now, but expression of grammar in the way that the examiner will know that you have a proficiency in English, not just you're just writing many words. And I try to tell us, I try to tell people, try our attempts to um, make your uh, your extra, or let me put the word, your sub-ideas. That was that what I want to say, your sub-ideas. Sorry, I, I like to understand what this question. The challenge was that, uh, uh, for instance, a Chinese man may find relating with American neighbors to be a serious task. Okay, that's the initial word. But you can push it in other ways. You can write a sentence in five ways that will stick for legs. But one way is that understand the power of passive sentences and try to use it in your work. Now, this um, can be applied. This thing I just said now is the same principle for the second topic sentence. And then, but of course, when you're trying to tell concept, don't just start like that. You must you must do what use connective device. Example, in addition, or you can say another reason why so and so, or you can say furthermore, you can also say alternative reason mm -hmm. for this, uh, for, for, for um, another reason that can be pointed out is so and so. So that's another uh, that furthermore, you can say furthermore. So um, now, when you're writing your second idea, you may fuse the example and the explanation into one. You may even start with your explanation, I mean, with your example, and end your explanation, just to allow for flexibility, but maintain a non-emotional approach. Look at, uh, let me read out this one for us. Furthermore, loss of crucial information appears to be another major palatable experience encountered. Full stop. Let your topic sentence be one single sentence that is powerful and carries a lot of information. So now break it down. Language is a breakdown of, uh, uh, of communication. So any, any barrier of misinformation leads to information which may likely result in forfeited benefits. As a matter of fact, make sure any assertion you have in your essay should be converted to a tentative statement. And I will, I will talk about that at the end of this body. Now, how do you write your effects or your evidence? That's the last phrase, the concluding part of your body, body paragraph. It must be a truly conclusive aspect. Don't just stand up your essay with an explanation and jump out of it. Let there be a word that you bring it together. Something like therefore, something like ends, something like in effect, it can be demonstrated. Okay? In effect, it can be demonstrated that. Okay? Hence, it is, it, it, it can be seen. Or, or, or therefore, there are veritable facts that are. Uh, uh, the points, the points that have been earlier enumerated, proves or proves uh, uh, with a level of certainty or with a high level of certainty that so and so is so and so. That means you are trying to say, I, I, with all these points, it is quite explicitly clear that these issues are true. So I have said the main, the most common one is it can be demonstrated that but the moment ends remember therefore remember in effect so now add anything you want to now the reason why there are rules for you to add up what you like to add up is because it is your essay they won't you're not supposed to cram but the framework around some of these things should be mastered so that when you want to add your own it will be sensibly added and you will not have to like uh, mix, interpret, or mix up stuff. You can 
heart and you will feel, you know, like this. I still have a, 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 a say in this matter. Your English uh, argument, your, your, I, I mean, your grammatical argument, can, grammatical argument can still be put into place. So, I've also said of this, um, I, I want to move a little bit into um, the concession. Concession. And concession, in my own opinion, is what makes viewpoint A to be very simple. Straightforward, simple, direct. It makes your works nice. So when somebody is now writing concession and is now writing complicated English, what is the issue? Your concession should just be two sentences, one sentence. Okay? How be it? Or admittedly, or however, or although, okay, opponents of this view claim that, and you tell us what they claim, then you now negate it. Just although opponents of this, opponents of children's discipline allude or presume or, 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 or you know, argue that punishing children will bring a high level of psychological torture or psychological uh, 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 disturbance in, in, you know, uh, for, 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 for possibly long periods of time. And you just say, you just say however, full stop, however, research has shown that the impact of punishing children have better effects or, or, or long-term effects that will wipe away any form of psychological or any form of emotional discomfort or, the, or uh, 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 emotional deficit. That's all. Two li one line, two lines, actually it should be two lines, but one sentence, one complex sentence. Starting with albeit or alternate or, or uh, admittedly. Admittedly is to agree. Although is to say their point. So admittedly, there are few drawbacks from the act of from, from the act of punching children. However, the positive impact have been proven to last longer and wipe off the negative or the uh, untoward aspects. So what's that? Yes, sir. So two lines, three lines, you are okay. No, no need to be telling me uh, because in Germany. Mm -mm, no, 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 just stop at that point and then move to your conclusion. And so the conclusion is the paraphrase of the outline is actually more a more detailed paraphrase of the outline. That's the conclusion. It's a more detailed paraphrase of the outline. Then you now have your restatement, which is like they are farming your points and they are farming my points. Okay, and I will tell you there is a structure for it. In conclusion, or conclusively, comma, this essay discussed. This essay discussed the, the impact of conscience on the child, the positive impact of conscience on the child through punishment and the, uh, uh, the, 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 the possibility of raising leaders through the act of dealing with the child. Now you can just fit together the impact of conscience and the possibility of raising leaders or leaders, leaders raising possibilities by the effect of punishment. Yeah, your effect, your consensual will be in your second paragraph. Now, some people may now have a second paragraph that will still be having a point, but for me, it's a waste of time. You don't have time. You don't have to write on that point. Two points is okay. If you say, I you. Something that at the end of the day, you are looking for yourself. If you don't write one point, you don't say yourself is not possible. God forbid. So write two points, go to your concession, conclude and jump and read your essay. Once it's one fifty words, you have you have gotten yourself. That's all. Now let me tell you something. 
If you can fulfill the parameters that is required to have a seven, you can't have less than a seven. That's the truth. And I've said, I've said this before. Task achievement, I mean, task response, you were able to answer the question correctly. You did not answer question A for B. Number B, uh, uh, you, you were able to uh, uh, give question. That is, all your essay started with a, a question device connecting device, you use connecting device appropriately, eh? you use your paragraphing, and I said paragraphing should be one line in between each, each paragraph. Eh? You use referencing very well. You are very repeating words in your, in your uh, lexical resource. You use vocabulary that is, that, that, that is specific to the topic. You are not speaking big English, it's not necessary. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, you use your grammar. Tentative statement is there. In, you know, pass, passive statements. Ah. Uh, they will give 7.5. That's the truth. So know, your, know what they want and give them. So that conclusion, in conclusion, comma, or conclusively, comma, or to sum up, comma, eh? this essay discussed the conflicts that generates from communal imbalance, full stop. Now, this is how you now write your own um, final reinstatement. It seems logical or it seems reasonable to reason, is this logical to reason that? Or it seems reasonable to assert that you now write what you assert. To stop. That's all. That's all. So you are true, and, and that's how you get your seven. That's all. So simple. But if you don't know the things they want, you just be writing big English, and then we still have since nonsense, nonsense score. Now I, 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 I like to quickly talk about two things before we round up tonight. Which I believe is going to help us in the, in the, in the, in the other lectures. What are the, the grammatical techniques you need to learn? I've mentioned some of them, but I'll mention others now. To be able to have your, 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 your um, structure to be well brought together. There are about seven. Okay. I, I want to know whether I'm Russian. So am I Russian? Am I putting under pressure? I, I want us to talk. Just, just on mute and say something. Okay. All right. Okay. So, thank you very much. No. All right, so thank you. So um, we'll just write these seven stuff down. Seven grammatical techniques you must learn to be able to attack grammar. And because, you see, two areas that students used to have much problem is grammar and lexical resources. That's the major reason students used to fail more, most. Grammar resources. And I will teach you how to deal with that because if you cannot, now, right now we have studied structure. This structure is straightforward. People that are writing about all over that they are more than a million. So they are too, they are too flexible to, to be tied to a structure. So they will allow, they will allow so many differences. But if your grammar and your logical resources is weak, that's voila. That's the major reason why people love this way. Now, I want to read out seven stuff that you just have to know. Number one, tentative language. Write it down. Tentative language. This is non assertive words. Non assertive words can be, might be, should consider, tend to, perhaps. Maybe, 
maybe should be prob probably should be uh -huh, probable that likely now so that i can help those who are probably not able to hear me as fast as i am running i'm going to paste the seven stuffs on the chat room now so you can just um look at it so that i can be faster all right so i've pasted it so you can just go through it and like, I, i'll be able to move around the next one is impersonal language so people call it impersonal approach that is what's in third person what that does not reflect i me or myself an example is instead of saying i will advise that just say it seems advisable that okay it seems advisable that so and so is done another one is it would appear that instead of, instead of saying um it's i i i i will um I, I will admit that just it will appear that and the examiner will recognize that you are giving an opinion in an academic and impersonal way and will be impressed by this now you see apart from the single time you are going to use i that is under your test statement if they ask a question from you apart from that single time that you use i don't ever use I in any other part of any of the essay again. Run away from the temptation that you should say I, we. How many of you? Are you are you, are you trying to involve the examiner? <laughs> of course, I will say we think. But you don't have to say that. Just say it will seem that. It will seem that. It will appear that. And then it is logical to conclude that. It is sensible to conclude that. It's, it, is, it seems logical. You can also say it seems logical so that you're not that seems and appears. Uh, somebody should help me copy it, please. Somebody is still asking, please let me copy again. Somebody can help me. Thank you. So it will appear that it appears that it seems that it will seem that it's logical. It's logical to conclude that it's sensible to conclude that. The other thing is passive language, and I've talked about it before, reversing subject to object. So now instead of saying the companies built the road, or the company built the road, let's say the road was built. I used the word wa, that was wrong. Okay, the roads were okay. The road was built, the roads were built by the company. Okay. So this is more 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 um, commonly used or should be appropriately used, or should be more appropriate with examples. So I'm going to say the children in Bulgaria, um enjoyed food or enjoyed feeding you know see um feed the, the, the food was enjoyed by children in Nigeria. that is more appropriate to also past events so if you are talking about past events it is very very easy for you to use passive language then of course the word non-emotional language that is the word very 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 now, even a lot of is regarded to be emotional. A lot of. So if you can avoid using a lot of, just you just say considerable number of people. Okay. That is more, that's a bit more weighty. Considerable number of people. Okay. Then um, the word too many, too many people may also to be regarded to be emotional. Okay. Then there are few words that we use in you know in our religious settings that you know should uh, try to avoid using in your essay. Something like it is well, ah, it is well, okay. or, or you know sometimes you just wait wait the word to be sure that it doesn't it doesn't appear religious, it doesn't appear too emotional. That is wait is uh, calling calling attention of the examiner's emotion. No, don't don't. You're not writing a love letter. Be careful not to, to I mean, not to put the emotion of the designer. Don't put strings so that you don't get 
So then the, the other one is ah, please help us. It's that people are living. So please kindly help us to the pace. It's like so people are living and then they cannot. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, um, form then a formal language, appropriate vocabularies. Now, this particular aspect I just mentioned now, topic specific vocabularies. Hmm. There's only one way to grow in it. Only one way. And the only way is by reading. Reading appropriate books such as BBC News app, uh, Guardian um, articles, not Guardian Nigeria, the Guardian that is International Guardian, um, Telegraph, uh, New York, whatever. All these papers, even you may even read sport papers, gold, gold.com, and all that. Please. Let us engage ourselves with reading a lot. You will find a lot of vocabularies and write them down if you can, and uh, you get better. Then, complex sentences. Apart from your topic sentence that, that you're going, that we are going to be picking, bringing out points. I mean, we are going to be like making your examiner know what you're going to say. Try not to use too simple words. If the boy, the boy went to the market. Ah, maybe you could just. Write it in another way that we just catch some attention. Not necessarily that you are going to write big English, but if you can bring it under sentence so that it doesn't appear to me. Avoid having two simple sentences in between your paragraph. You understand? You can use simple sentences to start, at least as a test, is well, and then maybe to finish, but not in the middle because the examiner is going to be engrossed with what you are trying to say. So by the time you are fusing words into words, it could catch attention and give him a group that you know what you are saying. All right? And then, noun persons. This is um, a way of referencing. Now you have saying hospital workers, but say people that work in just hospital. Okay? Or people that argue against the points. Okay? Words that carry the title of what you are, trying, of people you are referring to without necessarily repeating those words. They are called noun persons. Okay, I, I want to see if I can just pull out some examples of noun persons for us so that we can have it and then it can be, you know, at least you can use it when necessary. Let me see if I can do, do, do that now. So now, I don't know what taxpayers, thank you very much. That is it. Or people that pay tax, uh -huh. you can even write that. So in a way you are trying to avoid, avoid repeating <laughs> the noun. That's what I trying to do. Now let let me let me see this noun persons. Uh, I'm to really eat it. I thought I saw it now. So now, after all of this, I want to round up with um, uh, how to plan for this essay. Okay, I've seen it. How to plan for this essay. Okay. Uh, I want to just paste this quickly, then I will talk about how to plan for essays. Planning for essays. How do you plan? If you can plan for your essay and you can write tangible points, you give yourself a level of leverage over someone that is just going to write in from the head. Now, write this, write this time code down. Okay? I want you to get that place. Yes. Uh -huh. Write this time, time code down. Three, twelve. Five. Now look at this. Look at this. This is the noun persons. Your essay body, one idea can start with noun persons. Noun persons are nouns which identify people by their role. Taxpayers, you know, people who work, who pay tax, people who support, people who are set, authorities, the government, contributors. So I think you can see that. Now, three. 12, 5. That is a framework, a framework of time. Three minutes, 
to plan your tax plan. That is, you try to write your outline. 12 minutes to write your reports. Five minutes to cross check. This will be your, your standard practice time. Then, moving on to essay two. Seven. 25, 12, or 13. 7, 25, 13. Sorry, is that not five minutes? Please, how, how much is that, please? Uh, so it should be 7, 25, 8. Yeah. 7, 25, 8. So seven minutes to plan. It could be up to 10. 25 minutes to write, eight minutes to read through. Now, if you are not practicing this particular pattern in your, in your practicing section, ha. Huh, how do you, when do you want to practice it? <laughs> Is it not an exam mode? Let me do something. Whatever you are not used to before, before, before I enter the exam, you can't start doing it on the exam mode though. Hmm. They call it, I don't know the words they call that thing. So that person just become freeze. I, I practiced the act of going to the toilet during my reading section while I was practicing. And I did it a number of times. That's okay. After my second um, second um, essay, I will go to the toilet and I will come back. And I will finish in, four, in maybe 52 minutes. So that is plus the time of toilet, 52 minutes altogether, 55 minutes. So I, I was already confident that I can do it in the exam hall. And I did it in the exam hall. After the second paper, after 30 minutes, I went to the toilet, spent like five minutes, came back, and I was able to finish in 55 minutes. That's because I've been used to it before the... If you go and try it on the exam day for the first time, this is the way, <laughs> this is the, way the highest people will be looking at you. Okay, okay. <laughs> because you did not, you are not used to it. So you, got, you must get used to a particular pattern that you have, you have practiced over, over time. Now, Try to adapt your own skill. You don't have to use my time frame. You can decide to use 10, 25, or, or main, whatever. 10, 20, 10. Or 10, 25, 5. Anyone that works for you. But you must have time to plan. You must have time to plan. Yes. You must have time to plan. You must really like settle down and plan. And tax two must be planned for. Move more than plan tax one. And how do you plan for tax two? One, your idea. Two, sub idea. You must have three ideas or even four. And you must have sub ideas. Sub ideas are your break, you break down your idea into pieces, maybe two or three. Now, let, let, let's give an example. I'm trying to think about an example. Why children should stay in the hostel? Are not in school. That's maybe an answer like that. That was just here I wrote. Um, I think, yes, that was the thing we wrote. I wrote for my, the, the one that God gave me self of a young child. Okay. How to, uh, I mean, uh, okay, timing for one is three, twelve, five. Okay. So the first point is concentration. Under concentration, we have focus on academics, then two, rest, rest. Let me, I can add one again. Time for sport, I mean, sport, sporting, sporting time. Now, so now this I'm going to write now. So I want to write, uh, written my three sub ideas like that. My, my key point is concentration. So by just is rest. What's the first one for my supply jazz? Somebody should remind me. Rest, um, spotting time, and I spent on one. Fo I think focus. Okay, focus. Now, if I want to explain now, it's so easy. I'll just say the foremost reason why students. Okay, focus on academics. Thank you. The foremost reason why students should be uh, should be encouraged to stay back in the hostel is so that they could concentrate on their studies. Full stop. This is because it is often 
observed that when students are within the style of, 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 of um, study, they have more focus on their academics, as well as ample time to rest. I could even put a full stop. In addition to this, they will be able to um, pay, um, they will be able to attend to sporting activities. Now, I've made my examples clear. Now, you can my imagine financial saying, this is because when, when students are told, they are pressing them go and fresh water, they will now, they will now fresh water, they will, ah, yeah, they have scattered the ocean. Because you are, you, are, you are not able to eat your point. Now, when your examiner sees your explanation that it is eating points, is is an undeniable way to bring the examiner to give you a mark instantly. Of course, you now add your tennis statement to it. You know, I did this add tennis statement. If I now add tennis to it, I'll just push up. Boom! Plus one. That's just it. Chicken now. Mm, that's it. Now, if I now go to the second part and I say, okay, um, uh, 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 involvement in, in politics, okay? Involvement in politics or involvement in extracurricular activities. And that's in number one, political involvement. Number two, um, uh, a, a, a life, a, 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 a number two, I just mentioned some, please help me to fill up the gap, please. I mentioned like two or three other sub points. So if I plan like that, my writing will be smooth. Sincerely, if I've been practicing very well, I know how to write and I will write straight. As a matter of fact, I will finish writing before 20 minutes. I will not be looking at my work, changing, removing, or putting, adding. Yeah, I say high level of high level, I just need something else. I'll be able to change my synonyms properly. I'll be able to. Look. And if you do not read your work after writing, you will not have a seven. I can tell you. <laughs> it's not a matter of maybe uh, where I wrote very well. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's not really well, no, no. If you don't read your work again, if possible, two times or three times after, say like you move. There's no way you can have seven. If you have written before, you can have all the time. I rushed my task to cease that one day. But when, when, when you settle down and you say, All right, I want to read my work again, you will see at least three mistakes or five, <clears throat> and you'll be surprised. Ah! <clears throat> <coughs> you'll be surprised. Say, ah, so I didn't even come out here. Yeah. I'm telling you, you'll be shocked. So you must be able to read your work. And that's why that eight minutes or ten minutes after is very crucial. You must read your work again. Again. So you write at least three point three ideas in case you have the time to write up all the three ideas. And three sub ideas each under each of those points, at least two or three. Those ones have as your example and explanation. Okay? You can use the third one as your example. Then the first two explanations. So one idea, three sub ideas. Two, I, the second idea, three sub ideas. Third idea, three sub ideas. So you cannot pick the best two to be your body one. If you have time, you cannot write body two and then write down one two. And that's it. So I say, sir. If I don't know anything about the point in call, <laughs> do you know, I believe on analysis now, they ask you about something like gingivitis. I, sincerely speaking, you didn't, you didn't read it, but you know that there's something about vitis, vitis, okay, inflammation, okay. That's all you need. You just start talking about redness, uh, uh, pain, uh, whatever, because you know that anything by this is what is what inflammation. The same principle. If you find find yourself trapped by a, a question you don't know anything about, go to the nearest question. Yeah, problems. <laughs> Thank you, man. Go to the nearest. It's always not self vomiting. Not self vomiting. <laughs> you know, it's it's so straight. Don't go to the nearest point. Pick it. Funny shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
don't have time. There's no time to waste. They're asking you about a uh, uh, moon. The astronauts, why astronauts should be going to the moon? And uh, uh, why, why is it bad for astronauts to go to the moon? So that if, they, um, I mean, uh, because they are thinking of funding astronauts. I'm like a moon. I don't know about moon. I've never been to the moon before. I don't know about astronauts. The astronauts guy hates them. Now, now I want to think about mm -hmm. Just think about going to to UK. What are the impacts of going to UK? <laughs> just, just, you know, pick a point that is closest to it and am I your, am I your, your, your ideas. See, what makes idea to be acceptable is not the correctness of the idea. It is the logical presentation of the idea in such a way that we fascinate or probably make the examiner to see that you know what you are saying. Am I making points? There are some points that if you see them, excuse me, you know, they don't know what to say. Uh, when, 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 when the children are beating, they will now be crying, crying, crying. Ah! <laughs> Already, you have scattered yourself. <laughs> or you start saying, uh, you know, and uh, there, there's a saying in my village. Ah! Which saying? There's a saying. Ah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Anything that's suffer. And that's why the presentation of your point matters. In speaking, you can be saying rubbish happily, and you will be laughing with you. On that speaking, you know, you'll be saying beautiful rubbish. How you be? Because what the examiner after is how can you express yourself logically? How you be saying <laughs> what? When I was inside that water, how was almost drowning? I've never swam. I've never swam, uh, swam or swam or whatever in your life. I see that. Until I found a, 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 a highly intelligent. Uh, a helper who put my hands up and I felt I was going to die. I, my eyes were deep and nothing had happened before. Your position was what matter because you are talking with a sense of a, a sense of hype. But by the time you now write something and even if you know what you are saying, but the way you present is not even it's not catchy enough. You have lost that math. And that is why I said you don't even have to even know that topic deeply. Just pick a nearest topic and pick the point. And that's why reading white is even important, but it is not the ultimate. It is your expression of your point that is ultimate. And so you must not find a way to be able to put your point together. And that's the reason why your planning is key. Your planning is key. Now, I want to stop here. Tomorrow, um, on um, the next time we'll be talking about discussion essay. And what differentiates discussion essay from uh, opinion viewpoint? So we're going to be talking about that tomorrow. And then next week, I really look forward to next week because what I want to do also in next week is more of tests, trying out tests and all that, so that we'll be able to move to speaking in the last week of our work. So um, why I want to stop here, I like to entertain questions from us um, so that we can actually like see how far we can. We'll just put the question in the box. Can I use voice? Hello, I'm sorry. Let's start back with you now. So we have questions. Hello? Okay, I think I saw one question now. Please we can flip it to ask a question now. Can we use effect in our first body paragraph? Or we should link it to our second body paragraph. Okay. I will, I will advise that you delay it to your second paragraph, but it is not a crime if you, use, if you use your effect twice. It's not a crime. Now, somebody asked a question very okay. early at the, at the time of... Um, let me put the branch back to that question. 
That's what I said something like that. Is it uh, I, rec I recopied the message, the question. Okay, okay what was the question? Okay, so will this not lead to so much repetition? Okay, is that what you copied, ma'am? Okay, okay, okay. No, the can we use effect in the other round? Yes, yes, I've seen it. Maybe, yes. Yeah, I've seen it. So don't want to say that when you are talking about uh, when, when you are repeating. Um, well, now it is not going to amount to tautology or repetition. No, if you are using um, a proper synonym, so there are ways. You, the synonyms is not necessarily if you if you write something a different word, you could use a noun for a verb, or you could use a, a another tense to write it. So that's okay. You can do that. And you can also try and probably write in a different sentence from maybe passive them active and all that. You can change it around just for that if you don't want to be able to carry the words you should carry. As you practice more often, you get used to you get better on it. So the question here is that can we um can we use okay tentative statements? Ah how often can you use tentative statements? In fact, if you can use it for every sentence, it's okay. You can use it recklessly. Question. Yes, recklessly, recklessly. Just make sure that you use it Just make sure that it's appropriate too. You cannot talk about the for, for what is past. You cannot talk about the present and the future. Okay. Then let me see this again. He said, sir, in a question that is framed a statement, then what are the causes? Do you agree? Okay. Now, this is like a two question essay but they are trying to allow um, they are trying to be bring you into an approach of um tentative um, approach of viewpoint essay you will first of all do the, the viewpoint essay and then you, you, you bring that to a concession and then you answer the question that's how you deal with it uh, then can oh, yeah. one use eh? can one use all it in all programs yes or like how many times is the best as many as possible. Can you give some reasons before you now say I agree or not for introduction? You don't have to give reasons because you, you are going to still give reasons in your body. So why do you have to be giving reasons when you see when you start to say, now some people believe that you should give reasons in your outline statement that um, this essay will discuss the reasons, namely food and nutrition, as well as uh, 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 energy, whatever, why children should eat well. Now you can write that one, no? but if you are sure of your grammar, sure. if you are not sure of your grammar, if you are still low level, no level like us, like people like us, just write the reasons why, so and so and so, because you have said you are going to talk about reasons, so they will expect these reasons in the essay. You don't have to enumerate the reasons, because sometimes it, 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 it will become clumsy in your write-up. And if you become clumsy, you miss the target of your, of, 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 of the, Yes, I mean, you, you miss the essence of your writing because you are writing so that you can impress the examiner. Now you go to the examiner and, because you, you didn't even know what you are saying anymore. Can you please help us to put all this together in this interview question so that it could be clearer? Yes, we will do that, but not now because we are still having other types and I don't want us to rush. I like us to go through the types of essay, all right, so that we can mm -hmm. now have. Mm -hmm. No, all the time to the to, 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 but of course I will still allow us to um write the way we I want us to write you see let me tell you something about okay, before I tell you mm -hmm. what to say okay uh, what's the question and I said you can you can use as many as possible tentative language now let me say this quickly if you are here, just say yes. I want to that people listen to me. If you just say yes or type yes, whatever. All right. No, we're now, online. Um, it is good or it is advisable that you are able to draft an. It is good that you are able to draft an essay by yourself using principles taught you and then you allow assessment from an from either a coach 
or an independent assessor using his own frameworks, and then he will not tell you that you did well, than to be spoon fed, you know, how the essay will go from the beginning to the end. Now, I've given you a framework for viewpoint essay now. Are you getting me now? At this level, it's, it's, it's more or less like I've told you, these are the points, these are things you should put here. At this point, put this one here. As a whole, now, if I now ask you to write an essay, I write a good essay, you will very likely have a seven after we are able to like write an essay together uh, and after this particular class because you are apt enough to apply the principles diligently. Because you know, you definitely that kind of person, you don't write it in, in, in 40 minutes, you write it for almost an hour. You will take your time, you will be careful and all that. That process in itself, as a way of hooking you in a, at a very high level of proficiency, even before you meet any teacher. And that is what we call self-learning. Okay? So it is, and it is effective because this is a, this is a, uh, what I call a, a lifestyle exam. So more or less, a bit is involved. And a bit that is self-inculcated as a stronger way, uh, pattern to stick than the one that they impart on somebody. So it is, it is going to be more advisable. That, let me put it that way. And for my students, the students I take generically, we don't write essays together. You can ask any of them if you know any of them. I give them assignments. They will go and write any way, any way they like, and they submit. And when they submit, I will not mark them generically. I will not correct. So in correcting, they now know, okay, I write this one better. But truth be told, many of them are able to write excellently, even without writing with them. And this is the most important. That's the reason why those people will likely do well if they face the real exam, because they have been used to facing that challenge using principles than just being taught, okay, they are right to, or they are right down. <laughs> now, they're, now, now, let's not know. Most of the time, I don't even give examples, but they will just find the structure. And then, uh, since they have books and materials, they use the materials, they form a digital structure. When they are corrected, next level. And the more they write, the more they get better. So I will advise that for us. I think it is a better model than trying to write together, write together, write together. Okay? And I've seen people write, I've seen some of, the, uh, some of our students on this platform write as one essay, and I'm impressed, very impressed, because it was like they're writing for a long time. And there's nothing simple, there's nothing difficult in it. CCTV, mix it up, different sentences. Okay, avoid, avoid repeating them. And then, <laughs> that's why I'm doing boy. If you can follow the principle, you cannot have anything less than seven. I'm sure of that, oversure of that. So let's try and see how we can get this through. Can you elucidate on how I can fuse those two reasons with question in an argument that actually, and of course, you don't even have to write up the two reasons for your question. Just one is okay. Just tell us the argument of your poster and one point, one argument that you used to knock it out. That's all. No, nothing more. Okay. Um, admittedly, um, a lot of persons have seen this particular act to be dangerous. However, research has shown that it does not have, it is not true. Simple. Can we submit essays for you for review? Yes, as far as this. As far as we are within this scope of the teaching, definitely that is possible. And I have people that have been doing that. Just that I don't want us to go beyond the scope. If we are probably doing tax one and you are bringing tax two, I'll say, let us finish tax two and let me check your essays. Okay? So it's just within the scope and within the resources that you have. Okay? So do we have other questions? I think we are virtually true today, but I, I also want to encourage. The materials that you use, you should be careful so that they don't, they don't bring more confusion. 
Um, I I paste some address on on the Telegram page. Some of my friends. And go through them again and how see how we can use them appropriately. Stuff you said we sorry, I didn't get that. Is evaluation and sub idea the same thing? Yes, you use your sub ideas to form the frame of your explanation. That's why you have the two or three sub ideas. So you have them under your planning that this is are, these are my sub ideas. So they will not form the frame of your explanation. So the voice message you sent you sent on this thing. Let's say I will send it to this. I don't know. This maybe it's not exactly I can't remember saying maybe I said I have forgotten. Okay. So thank you everyone. Um I, I, I like to hand over the mic to, to Mr. Bella to take over. So it's it's been a, a wonderful teaching session. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Yeah. So um, this will be real quick. Uh, well done, everyone. Well done, Mr. Steve, especially Mr. Steve. Uh, I just want to say, uh, Mr. Steve is not going to be available on Friday. So the Friday class, we're bringing it to tomorrow. That's Thursday. Um, I think it's better to have it tomorrow rather than uh, miss our complete class on Friday. So Mr. Steve will be uh, having the class 9 to 11 uh, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Um, also, um, please feel free to share the, 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 the links with your, with your colleagues who might need the, the help. Um, and that's just all I have to say. It's night time. Um, I'm sure a lot of you will be, will, will be tired and probably going to work tomorrow. I'm going to work tomorrow very early. So I want to say, um, good night, everyone. God bless you. Um, God bless you. Good night, thank you. Good night, thank you, Mr. Good night, thank you, sir. Good night, Mr. Steven. Mr. Steven, thank you, Mr. Tunde. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.